Hey everyone, let's get started. So welcome to Snap This, making snapshots vastly more useful in Manila and Cinder. So my name is Clinton Knight. I'm a senior software engineer at NetApp. Uh, I've been in storage management applications development for about 18 years. Uh, the last three of those uh, having a great time in the OpenStack phenomenon. Uh, I'm a core developer in the Manila project, uh, and most recently I led the development of the revert to snapshot feature in Manila. Hello, everybody. I'm Rodrigo Barbieri. I'm a computer scientist. I've been in software development for six years so far. Three of those years have been in OpenStack, mostly in Manila, uh, which uh, where I'm a core developer. And I've, I've worked in several uh, core features, uh, notably share migration, and I co-authored uh, multiple snapshots, which we will discuss in this presentation. So first, we will start by explaining what a snapshot is. Uh, then we will list the use cases um, for which snapshots uh, are useful in a cloud environment. Then we will get in detail about all the different semantics that, are, that exist in Manila and Cinder. And we will demonstrate those. And finally, uh, we will get questions and answers. All right, so there's a lot of storage systems out there. And we find a fair number of implementations of what uh, passes as snapshots. Uh, not all of them consistent with what we would expect a snapshot user experience to be uh, in OpenStack or, or in any cloud. So I wanted to level set about what we expect a snapshot is. Uh, so a snapshot, it's an image of a cloud storage resource. It could be a, a Cinder volume, it could be a Manila file share. Um, but that snapshot is typically going to be local. Uh, that means it's really resident on the same underlying hardware that's, that's satisfying the, the, the storage resource. Uh, anything else uh, that, that's not local wouldn't give us the performance characteristics that we're looking for with snapshots. Um, we've also seen storage systems where uh, snapshots are actually created as uh, an interdependent chain uh, of snapshots, and you, can, you, you really can't delete a snapshot in the middle of the chain because they can depend on one another. Um, in OpenStack, the expectation is, is that the, the tenant can create, utilize, or delete any snapshot at any time. That, that's the, the contract that both Cinder and Manila promise. Uh, similarly, a, a snapshot is a point in time image uh, of what that resource contained. Uh, so any, any mechanism that, for example, uh, copies files out of an active file system and, and uh, calls the result a snapshot really isn't because it wouldn't re reflect a single point in time. And then finally, a snapshot is a read-only resource. At the point it's taken uh, and then forever after that, it should always uh, contain the same thing. There's another, uh, several other reasonable expectations that you might have for a snapshot uh, in a cloud. Uh, the first is, is speed. Okay, so by that I mean a couple of things. One, the, the underlying storage resource should not significantly slow down in the presence of one or more snapshots. So some storage systems implement a copy on write or similar mechanism, so you might see a little bit of degradation in, in write performance if there's snapshots present. But there are storage systems out there that, that offer zero performance penalty in the presence of any number of snapshots. Uh, also, the Creating and utilizing and deleting the snapshots, those operations should uh, themselves be uh, fast. Really shouldn't take any time. We're not talking about uh, you know, creating full copies. Uh, snapshots should be space efficient. Okay, so the, the, taking a snapshot shouldn't consume additional space on the storage uh, underneath that, uh, uh, at least at, at, not at the time that you create the snapshot. Once you have a snapshot and then writes continue to happen in the underlying storage resource, of course, you're going to begin consuming more space. Uh, but but when, at the time you take a snapshot, you shouldn't consume uh, really any more space. And then finally, as a cloud tenant, you should be able to control the life cycle of the snapshot yourself. should not require any uh, admin intervention. So if your cloud doesn't offer snapshots, or if the snapshots don't conform to these expectations, then you're probably not being uh, served as well as you might be by the, your cloud and its underlying storage. Finally, a snapshot is not the same thing as a backup. We should not conflate the two. So a, a backup typically implies a full copy, typically held at a different location for greater resiliency. 
Uh, a backup uh, may even be in a different format. For example, uh, Cinder has a, a backup service that, that can back up to, to a Swift interface, a uh, storage grid, or an NFS share, or what have you. Um, but because of these considerations, uh, the, the, the separate location and the different format, restoring from a backup typically is going to take a much longer time. By, by contrast, snapshots uh, should be very fast, if not instantaneous. So when we talk about snapshots, the first use case that pops to mind is recovering lost data. So your data may have been uh, lost due to several reasons. Among them, um, it may have been deleted accidentally, or a virus may have wiped your data, or the file system may have become corrupt and uh, the data is no longer accessible, or the user maybe had just deleted the data and ended up regretting doing so. So for all those scenarios, having a snapshot allows you to re restore your lost data. And as Clinton mentioned, uh, backups are not the same as, as snapshots. And if your cloud does not offer a backup service, having a snapshot is very useful uh, to restore the data for the scenarios I mentioned. And if your snapshot is replicated, it's even better because uh, your data will be, uh, will be stored across several availability zones. So some other very interesting use cases. Uh, uh, they emerge when we start using snapshots as images. So let's picture for a moment uh, that you have to do a training session and you need to prepare an image for your students to, to, to use, uh, consisting of pre-installed pre applications. So what you can do, you can create a volume, install the operating system, install the applications, then you can take a snapshot, and from that snapshot, you can spawn several new volumes for your students to use, and they can be deleted later while you maintain your snapshot data intact. For big data analytics, you can do basically the same thing. Uh, b uh, using a pre-existing uh, snapshot image, you can create uh, several uh, new volumes or share for data processing, and uh, you can easily dispose of them when you're done. And you can do this repeatedly over time uh, for several data mining runs. Uh, for DevOps, that is a very interesting use case. So, uh, let's say that you have a new version of your application, and when you deploy it, uh, you find a bug, a critical bug in your application, or a software update had just crashed your operating system. And uh, the, the thing you want to do at this moment uh, is to restore, uh, sorry, I mean revert your, your application and your system state back to the, the previous stable state. So, Snapshots allow you to do that in a matter of seconds. Another very interesting use case is that uh, since snapshots are very efficient, uh, you can save multiple states of your system. So let's say that you are uh, installing libraries or in your application in a new operating system that you're not sure it works. Uh, what you can do, you can take a snapshot at each step of the installation or each component that you install so you can validate that everything is working, and if something does not work, you can just go back to the, to the previous step and redo that. Uh, an another, another one uh, that is very uh, useful when you use uh, snapshots in Manila is that if you're sharing your work across your company, or across uh, several other departments to the network, what you can do, you can create snapshots as milestones of your work, and you can continue working um, on, on your latest work in our original share, and just take a new snapshot when you hit a new milestone, and you can do that uh, with multiple snapshots. So let's go through the, the three semantics uh, for snapshot operations. Uh, the, the first is to create a new share or a new volume from a snapshot. Okay, so, so the idea here is that given a snapshot, we're gonna create a new independent writable object, be it a file share or, or a volume, that's initialized with the contents of the snapshot. Okay? So it, it sounds like it's, well, I, I could just do a clone, but it's not quite the same thing. So in, in Cinder, you can clone a volume repeatedly 
But if, if the parent volume is as undergoing change, then each clone is going to be slightly different. Um, whereas if you can take a snapshot, then you can repeatedly create a new volume from that snapshot. You still get a fully writable independent volume. Uh, but each one of those is going to be identical to the snapshot. Uh, so, so create from snapshot has been available uh, basically uh, from the beginning in both Cinder and Manila. So create from volume can actually satisfy most of the use cases that uh, Rodrigo uh, explained. Um, in some cases it's ideal, in some cases maybe not. Uh, certainly with software testing or training with a room full of students and you need lots of copies of the same thing, creating uh, you know, writable objects from a snapshot makes a lot of sense. Same with, with analytics. Uh, in, in the DevOps use case, if I need to roll back to an earlier version of, of an application that, that doesn't have a bug, uh, in, in this case, I could do that, but I'm going to have to run my application against a different volume, so it's going to be a little bit more, more work. Um, if I'm creating a volume or a share from a snapshot, it is going to consume additional space. And in some implementations, you may duplicate the space uh, up front. In others, you're going to be consuming additional space as writes happen to the underlying volume. Uh, but it is going to also consume additional quota. So to create a new volume or share from a snapshot, you've got to have enough quota for the, the volume count, but as, as well as the volume space. So Center and Manila, they, they don't have any uh, concept of space efficiency on the back end. They don't know uh, if, if you're going to be consuming space periodically. Uh, but if you, if you take a snapshot, um, create something from the snapshot, but then the, the parent completely changes, then you've consumed twice as much space anyway. Uh, so you're going to double your quota uh, consumption as you create uh, shares or volumes from snapshots. Okay. So semantic number two, this is one of the new ones that's in Manila. So basically reverting uh, a, a sh file share or a volume to a snapshot. The idea here is this, we're going to do an in-place revert, okay, or restoration of a share to the contents of the snapshot. Okay. Uh, the neat thing here is that you can do that repeatedly. So if you're doing some ex data experimentation, you can take a snapshot, do a bunch of writes, revert to the snapshot, write something different, and, and repeat the cycle. Um, so you're, you're literally, with this feature, turning back the clock to, to the point in time that the snapshot was taken. Um, so an important consideration, though, a, a limitation here, is that there's a number of storage systems in the world where uh, if you revert to a snapshot, uh, any and all snapshots that were taken after that point in time uh, are lost uh, irretrievably. The Manila community felt uh, very strongly that that was a form of data loss, uh, and so we designed this feature to only allow you to revert to the most recent snapshot known to Manila. That's actually not terribly limiting. If we talk about the use cases that we were going after uh, in this case, so you know, take the example of you know, widespread data loss or corruption. I've, I've deleted a bunch of files. Uh, maybe I got some malware um, or, or I did something stupid. Um, I, I just want to turn back the, the clock. But if I, if I revert to the most recent snapshot and the corruption is still present, well, that snapshot's not much good to me, so I'm going to delete it and then revert to what's now the, the, the newest one. And I can repeat that cycle until I get back to a good state. Uh, same with the, the DevOps use case. If I need to get my application back to a, a state before I introduce the bug, um, I'm going to delete snapshots one at a time until I get back to a good, good state. All right. So unlike Cinder, which understands that a volume is in use, um, Manila has no way of knowing that a, a file share has been mounted or is being used by an application. So stopping or otherwise quiescing the application uh, is a manual process for the application owner to do. Okay, most apps aren't going to react well for the, the file system instantaneously changing out from underneath them. Uh, so the apps should be stopped or quiesced. Okay. There may be some data. The application owner may understand that, that the share contains some data that he wants to preserve uh, that was written after that most recent snapshot was taken. So in that case, he might want to do a manual copy of some data uh, or maybe take another snapshot and, and create a new share from that just so that he has a copy of, of that. Because once you do the revert, there, there's no undo, okay? You, uh, you can do it repeatedly, but, but you, once you do the undo, you're not going to be able to get to, uh, to any point in time after that. So revert snapshot was added to Manila in the Okada release. And just last week, uh, Cinder merged uh, a spec for the same feature, and I know that they're working on it. Uh, I think the Cinder community has done a good job of, 
uh, in trying to maintain consistency with Manila as to how this feature is going to work. Okay, let's talk about another snapshot semantic now, multiple snapshots. So with multiple snapshots, our snapshots are basically read-only shares, um, which you can give access to users on your network uh, by adding access rules. So very similar to how you handle shares. Uh, multiple snapshots are, are, snapshots are very efficient in a way that uh, uh, there consumes absolutely no extra resources since the snapshot data is already there in your storage controller and what you're doing, you're exporting it to make it accessible directly. So it satisfies the use cases uh, very well where you just want to retrieve a subset of files or folders that you may have deleted or lost. And uh, it's not very recommended uh, when you want to uh, restore all your data or, or sorry, uh, operating system data. Uh, for those purposes, it's better to use, make use of the other uh, snapshot semantics, Clinton mentioned it. Um, and it also satisfies the use cases where uh, you want to share your milestones of your work across the network. Uh, it's available in Manila since the Okata release, and uh, we believe it's unlikely to be available in Cinder. So uh, now we are going to proceed to our demonstrations. Uh, first, let's start uh, and see how we can uh, enable and make use of those features in Cinder and Manila. So first, let's log in as, uh, as administrator so we can create a volume type. So we go to the volume type screen, hit create volume type, and uh, we create a new type, add a name, hit create, and that's it. We create a volume type, and we can proceed to create a volume using the type we just created. Now that we created a volume, we can create a snapshot of this volume. We give it a name and hit create a snapshot. Now that we create this snapshot, we can create a volume from this snapshot. There we go. We have a new volume from our snapshot. As you can see, that's very simple and straightforward. Now let's see how that is done in Manila. So in Manila, we can proceed to create a share type now to, in order to create our shares. And uh, when we do so, we, we give it a name and uh, we have to specify the public asterisk packs. Uh, here, I'm going to say that I want snapshot support. Uh, we do this because uh, our, we don't expect our storage vendors uh, that have drivers in Manila to all support snapshots. We'll get more detail in that uh, in a few moments. So uh, we create a share using the type we just created. Now we can create a snapshot of that share. And upon inspecting that snapshot, we see that's just a simple snapshot. It does not have a, an export location we can mount. If we inspect the share, we see that it was created without mountable snapshot support. The reason for this is that uh, we also have to specify the public asterisk spec for mountable snapshot support if you want to have this functionality for this set of shares. Again, uh, not all backend support this semantic. Some support uh, revert, some others support mountable, some support both. So. Uh, that's how we use our uh, public asterisk specs mechanism in Manila. So now that we have created another share type and we specify that we want multiple snapshot support, we use it when creating another share. Now we create a snapshot. And now if we inspect this snapshot, we will see that it has an export location. 
if we inspect the share that we created, we will see that it has multiple snapshot support because we use a share type that specifies that in the aster specs. All right, so I'm gonna re-log in as uh, a regular user. Obviously, to create types in, in both Cinder and Manila, you've gotta be an admin. Um, so I'm just gonna go and, and uh, run through the, the quick semantic uh, creating from uh, a snapshot. So I'll create a share, default type, uh, pick, pick my primary AZ. So this is what a, a normal tenant would see. Um, create a snapshot. And then starting with the snapshot, I can create a share. It's just that simple. So um, of course I can give it a name, uh, a different type. Um, but the, down at the bottom, the, the snapshot source is you know, uh, pre-filled in as the, uh, the snapshot that we started with. All right, so now share two contains uh, the contents of uh, the share one snapshot. All right, so now let's, let's move on to revert. Um, so I, I could just create a share and a snapshot and revert to it, but that would be a little bit anticlimactic. So um, I wanted to have a little bit of fun and, and also include one of Manila's other advanced features. So Manila supports uh, tenant-controlled replication of file shares. And so the, the rule is in Manila, if your driver supports snapshots and it supports replication, then it must also support replicating all of the snapshots of a replicated share to all of, of its replicas. All right, so we'll see that as part of this. So I'm gonna create a share pick my replicated type that I set up. And again, I'm gonna choose the, my primary availability zone. So primary, in, in my case, this is, this is my data center where I work. Uh, and so this share will be created on NetApp's ONTAP storage operating system. But this is a replicated share, so I'm gonna go in and say manage replicas, because I wanna create a replica. I need this to be highly available. So I'll say create replica. And there's only one choice here. So a little bit more background. I also set up uh, an instance of um, Cloud on Tap from NetApp, which is fully virtualized storage operating system running in Amazon. Could also run in Azure. So I can choose the availability zone called AWS. And so if you think about it, wait a minute, this is, this is pure Manila, and yet somehow I've, I've overlapped OpenStack with with Amazon, so I'm, I'm, I can only afford one data center, but I can have the same storage and, and, and replicate out to a completely different cloud. That, that's a it's cost saving measure, but also it opens up some interesting use cases of being able to do migration of uh, applications and their storage between very different clouds. So anyway, enough of that, back to revert. So my replica starts out as uh, out of sync. Within a few seconds, it'll become in sync. Okay, and so now I've got the same copies, uh, two replicas of this share at, at different sites. All right. So now I'm gonna go and create a couple of snapshots. So creating a snapshot of a replicated share takes a little bit longer because Manila has to make sure that that, that snapshot is replicated to multiple locations. All right. Create another snapshot creating two so that you can see Manila applying the rules for revert. So I have two replicated snapshots. Go back to the share and I can say revert share. So there's a pop-up here, but Manila has, has only given me one choice because it knows that snap two is, is the most recent one known to Manila. If I wanted to revert to snap one, I would have to delete snap two first. Okay, so the status transitions through reverting back to available, and the revert is complete. It should be an instantaneous operation. Let's take another look on how we use multiple snapshots now. Um, so let's create a share. Um, let's create a share type that supports multiple snapshots. All 
All right. Now, uh, let's do a little experiment. Let's uh, mount this share. First, uh, let's add uh, an access rule so we can mount it in our user terminal. So let's grab the export location. And now we can mount in our terminal. All right, let's add some content to this share. Uh, let's just create a sample file. All right, we got our file over there. Um, now we can take a snapshot of this share. Great. Now that we've taken a snapshot, let's uh, add some more content to this file, which, which will not show up in the snapshot. So we have a sample file now with uh, two lines of text. Uh, now we want to mount this snapshot. So let's grab the snapshot export location and try to mount it. But it will not work unless we add an access rule in order to mount this, this snapshot. This is because the access rules for snapshots are not inherited from the share. So now that we've added an access rule, let's just try to mount it again, and we've succeeded. Um, let's inspect this snapshot, and uh, we see that uh, we have the sample file with just one, one line of text. And uh, we will see that it's also read-only, as I've explained it, so we cannot change the contents of this snapshot. So at this point, are there any questions? Questions about the snapshot semantics? Gotham, you have a question? So uh, you, you mentioned that you couldn't do this with uh, all of the backends that are there and all the storage systems that, uh, that are part of the Manila tree and stuff. So how would I, as a user, be able to distinguish and get these, like, you know, I'm a, I'm a user, I'm looking yeah. at an OpenStack cloud. How can I create a share, and how, how do I know up front uh, that I could get these features? That's a great question. So, um, and, and that, that highlights, you know, one of the differences between uh, Cinder and, and Manila. So Cinder has, has always said that we expect all backends to have the same set of features so that if you have a Cinder interface, you know it's gonna be there. Um, with Manila, as we were moving forward and, and adding drivers, it was clear that there are some cases for a, a low-end storage tier that you just want to provide file shares. You don't necessarily need uh, all the advanced features, perhaps not even snapshots. And so there, there's actually value uh, in, in, in having uh, different feature sets. Uh, of course, that begs the question, then, well, how do I, as a user, understand that? And so uh, just like Cinder has uh, extra specs on volume types, which are completely hidden from the user. You know, Manila also has extra specs on the share types, which are hidden from the user. Uh, but Manila also added, uh, they, they, they pierced the abstraction a little bit and added um, the concept of a public extra spec. Um, so you can think of it as kind of like a, a you know, tenant-facing capability. Uh, so for a, a given share type, um, you can look at, at those public extra specs and understand if you create a share of this type, you know, what features are going to be available for it? Um, so, and, and it was important not only to, to, for you as a user to look at your screen and understand what you could do, but we also wanted those to be discoverable programmatically. So if you're scripting the Manila interface, you wanted to be able to understand what you're gonna get. So uh, that, that's why we have the, the public extra specs and a set of um, community agreed standard names for those extra specs. Uh, for the, the features that may or may not be present on a given uh, type. Thanks for the question. Anything else? All right, thank you all very much. Thank you.